Hey folks, Quillateen here, and welcome to an EVE Online Guide for Complete Beginners by a Mostly Complete Beginner. In this episode, we're going to look at exploration. Now, what I had said in the last episode, that I would go and go through the exploration career agent here. And I think you definitely need to do it. First of all, it's an excellent introduction to it, uh, to how exploration works. In addition to that, you get tons of free stuff that is going to be very important for actual exploration. But I found the actual job of like narrating that career path to be a little bit dull. Um, and it also left a few things that I want to address in a video that otherwise would have been way too long. So what we're going to do in this video, this account has already gone through the uh, exploration career. I just did it now. So if you go ahead and complete the exploration career, you'll be in exactly the same state that I am here. All I've done in this account, the tutorial, the industry tutorial, which we did um, last video, and then I've done the exploration career agent not on video over here but you should be in exactly the same state i am if you haven't done the exploration career yet that's okay you can watch this and then do the exploration career and you'll know a little bit more what the heck they're talking about currently i'm just in my capsule here this is the thing that happens if your ship were to say get destroyed and the reason i did that is i just wanted to start fresh here in my item hanger i have three well five Counting is hard. I have five different ships in here. One of this is just the capsule that I'm in, so that really doesn't count. One of it is the Valitor. This is our, our uh, starter ship. This is the ship that we can always get for free, uh, the Corvette, at any station whatsoever. We got the Venture, which we got from the business career path. This is the excellent mining ship. And we've got two other vessels in here. The Navitas is a vessel that you get really near the beginning of the exploration career over here. Um, it's a little bit odd because it's actually not a ship that's assigned for exploration at all. This is actually a really good support ship. It allow it gives you bonuses to remote armor repair. You can repair other people a little bit better and a little bit faster with the Navitas here. It's a good support ship in fleets, um, but I don't think there's any reason that you would fly this solo. I, maybe I'm wrong. Check the comments down below. Some of me have some info over there for us. But as far as I know, this is not something that you're going to be particularly excited uh, for. Hey, maybe you'll sell it. It doesn't actually sell for that much, but you got it for free. You could sell it for 200,000 ISK. Not too bad. When you finish the exploration career, though, you get yourself an Imicus. And an Imicus is exactly what you want for exploration early on. If we right click on this and show info and make sure we're on the trait page over here, this ship has a bonus to core and combat scanner probes. Scanner probes are one of the important and powerful tools of the exploration sort of experience. The other really important thing is the relic and data analyzer. So getting a bonus to our Vire strength here is really good. So as Galente, the Imicus is your exploration ship. If you're part of another faction, you'll just want to check which ship has the bonuses for you. The way you would do it, go to your Neocom over here. If you go to ship and ship tree, this will show you all the ships that exist in the game. By default, it will it should select your, your starter empire. So for me, it was Galente. But let's say you started off as the Amar over here. Okay, so this is these are all the ships that, that belong to the Amar Federation. This is your free Corvette. If you're playing as an Amar character, your free Corvette, your starter ship, is going to be the Imperer over here. And then there's all the frigates. These are the small ships. And we can just look through and just mouse over. We'll see the various bonuses. Ah, the Magnate. The Magnate over here has bonuses to scanner probes and analyzers. This is your exploration ship if you're Amar. If you are Kaldari, it will be the Heron. The Heron is your scanner ship here. By the way, the Heron also looks super cool, I gotta admit. Um, and then finally, as the Minmatar, your exploration ship is going to be the Probe. Very suitable name over here, because again, it's got the scanner probe and the data analyzer skill. And there'll be plenty of other ships that could have bonuses to exploration stuff as well, but we're just going to look at the frigates for now. So, again, as a Galente, the ship that I will have access to as a reward from the exploration career will be the Imicus. But again, you can... You can you can basically fly anything you want in this game. But what I'm going to do with the Imicus, I'm going to go ahead and assemble the ship. I have it. It was currently in a box. There you go. Now it has been unboxed, and I'm going to get into it. I'm going to make it active, so I will get into the Imicus. And there you go. And I think it's it's a neat-looking ship because it's asymmetrical like this. Very strange. I, I don't know why it, it, they designed it this way, but I have to admit it's really cool, and it certainly stands out from a lot of other ships. And it's got these really shiny, like, exhaust ports over here, like, totally chromed out. I, I know. I think it's a very interesting little design. So this is our Imicus. It's really good at, at, at exploring. So how do you explore? I mean, obviously you can just fly around, but the exploration stuff has a little bit more to do with it. Um, there are these anomalies in most systems at any given time that you can scan to discover where they are. For example, let's say we open up the agency menu over here. 
and I go to the Exploration tab. Hey, Exploration, that's handy. And go to, say, Cosmic Signatures. If we do this, this will list nearby systems that have some Cosmic Signatures. Now, the system that you are in that has the, the tutorial agents, right? These career agents. So uh, for me as Galente, it's this Kouster system. This will say it's got tons of signatures in it. These are, these are you know, cosmic signatures that you'll be able to explore. These are all tutorial signatures, okay? Um, they are not, ignore the system, all these signatures here will not really be valuable. They're, they only exist as part of the tutorial system. You don't wanna do exploration in the tutorial system, which is what this Kouster one is for me as this Galente. Instead, you're gonna to wanna to go to another system and find something with signatures. So I, Algal Gile is one jump away, has one signature. Luminaire has two, two over here. Ooh, three in Durapont. Oh, oh, it's only listing two. Someone, sorry, it's three jumps away, two signatures. Ah, uh, we got three here. So you can filter it by distance. You can also filter it by security status. Um, the lower the security status of a system, the more valuable the signatures will be. Generally speaking, you're probably, depending on what you're looking to do, you're probably gonna wanna find a system with more than one or two signatures because one or two signatures is almost certainly just going to be some wormholes to wormhole space. Although that is very, very exciting um, as well. Uh, the Civilist system might work. I, I might go ahead and, and check this out. Point 0.6 is sort of mid-security, um, but that should be okay. I'm going to click and set as a destination, but I'm not going to go there quite yet because I need some stuff on my ship. These cosmic signatures, you cannot fly to them directly because you just have a vague image on your sensors of, oh, there's something weird somewhere out there, but you don't know exactly where, therefore you can't warp to it. What you have to do to be able to scan down these signatures so you can narrow down what they are as well as where they are is you're going to need scanner probes. So if we open up our ship fit, this is the Imicus here, it's totally naked, it's got nothing equipped. We're going to equip a few things. If you have finished the um, exploration career, you will have a core probe launcher in your inventory. This is a high slot item. It doesn't actually use a turret though. So the Imicus has three high slots, but only one turret hard point. I'm gonna go ahead and drop the probe launcher in there. There we go, you can see the turret's not actually occupied. And in addition to that, we're gonna need scanner probes. Each scan uses eight probes. So we're gonna have eight probes over here and we're gonna drop it on their ship. Probes do automatically get recovered after you, um, when you, whenever you leave a system or anything like that, which is good. So eight in theory is all you're ever going to need. Um, once we get out there, there is a slight convenience to bring 16 with you because then your ship will auto reload between things, but you don't actually need more than eight. So that's step one. This will allow us to track down the cosmic anomalies, figure out what they are and where they are so we can warp to them. However, once we have found them, there's a good chance what we're gonna wanna do is break into some stuff and get some fat, fat loot. There are two primary sites that you might find while exploring or while scanning with your, your, your probes here. Those would be data sites and relic sites. And those sites have containers that have some really sweet loot in them, but you have to hack them before you can open them. And to hack them, you'll need an analyzer. You'll need a data analyzer for data sites, and you will need a relic analyzer for relic sites. Now you get the civilian data analyzer and civilian relic analyzer for free as of doing the exploration career. But as you should know by now, anything with the word civilian in it is very, very, very low end and not very effective. Um, so we're gonna wanna actually purchase a proper one before we go. Now, I don't know if the Kouster system actually has good ones for sale. Let's find out though. I'm gonna go ahead and hit the regional market over here. And I'm gonna search for what I'm looking for, which is going to be a data analyzer. All right, so Data Analyzer 1. Data Analyzer 2 is more powerful, but you need more skills for it, and it's also really expensive. Data Analyzer 1, worth about 34,000 bucks. The Analyzer 2, 1.2 million. So over here, again, I like to sort by price, and ideally, if you get really lucky, the cheapest one will be available at the current station. And indeed, I, I happen to get lucky. There are scanners here. Um, available at the lowest price at the station. There might be some someone nice jumping off a bunch of these so that newbies, or they might know that a lot of newbies will be interested in buying them, so they'll put it in the list. Anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and buy one. You don't need more than one, I'll just double click. There we go, yeah, cheaper than regional average, excellent. So that's my data analyzer. Now I would also like a relic analyzer. Relic analyzer. Okay, the cheapest one is three jumps away. 
but there are some for sale at this station, and the price is also fine, so we'll buy one of those. Relic analyzers tend to be slightly more expensive than data ones, because relic sites tend to be better, but we're going to want one of each, and it's still, hey, it's still on the discount, that's great, we'll go ahead and hit the buy button, lovely. So, now I can go and close the regional market, and in my inventory, I've got a relic analyzer one and data analyzer one. So I'm just going to go and drag those. These are mid power slot items over here. So we want these two so that regardless of what kind of site we find, we can work with it. It's awfully handy to have either an afterburner or a micro warp drive on our ships for that because we're going to want to be able to zip from one of those containers to another fairly quickly. Um, an afterburner uses a lot less power, so you can often run an afterburner continuously, depending on your ship. Micro warp drive uh, uses a lot more power, so you don't tend to be able to run it non-stop. On the other hand, it's much, much faster. We do have these civilian afterburners, but again, civilian models of stuff are pretty poor. So let's see, let's, we've played with afterburners, let's see if we can find a micro warp drive. So again, I'm going to open up the regional market and type in, all one word, micro warp drive. Boom. Ship equipment over here. Afterburners and micro warp drives both come in a huge variety of different sizes and powers. So we've got all the way from five, I guess this is mega newtons, 50, 500, five, uh, 50,000 uh, nanometers, or, or sorry, not nanometers, uh, mega newtons. If you go and check the info on some of these, it will tell you in the description, this is meant to be fitted on capital ships. Uh, the 50s over here are usually fitted on cruisers or battle cruisers. Technically speaking, some of these larger ones can be fit on smaller ships, but it can often be really hard to meet the power requirements and whatnot. And we don't need to go that fast. So what we're looking for is five mega newton micro drive one. So this is the smallest micro drive over here, and it's going to be the cheapest. There's a micro drive two, and there's a couple other sub variants as well. But just the vanilla one here is going to be fine. Estimated about 36,000 ISK. Uh, unfortunately, the only one being sold in our station is at 49,000, but hey, that's that's fine. We're going to buy one of those. I will purchase you. And then if we check our inventory over here, I've got the micro warp drive. I'm going to drop it in. Now something interesting just happened. You may have not noticed it. Let me rewind. I'm going to unfit the micro warp drive. See how it says stable over here? What this means, this is our capacitor. This is our battery. This is the power we generate. If this says stable, that means we can run every single one of our systems and always have full batteries. We're not using up all of our power. In fact, if we mouse over here, we have 34% excess power. We're generating more power than we can use. If I drop in the micro warp drive, now it just depletes in 40 seconds. If we are running all our modules, specifically if we're using the micro warp drive, our batteries are going to run dry in 40 seconds. And then what will happen is the modules will just turn off. That's all. This is not a bad thing. And it's very common if you're designing a ship with micro warp drive. And, you know, especially until you get maybe a bunch of the skills that lower some of your power requirements and get some cool rigs and different things like that. It's fairly common that with a micro warp drive enabled, you will run dry. Compare this to the afterburner where that doesn't happen, right? If I pull this out, put in the afterburner, we get no note about that whatsoever. And we can find out how much power these things use. If we right click on the afterburner, show info, attributes. We can see a few things in here. Activation cost, five gigajoules, as an as an example. Some things, you know, we'll list other stuff in here. If we compare it to the micro warp drive, if I hold shift, it'll open in a separate window. So instead of five gigajoules, we have 45 gigajoules. Quite the difference. And the power grid also has a maximum about how much it can convert and things like that. But I'm going to put the micro warp drive on anyway. That's going to be okay. It consumes a lot of our power grid even when idle over here and it'll drain our capacitor quite quickly. Our capacitor produces um, 432 joules every 127 seconds. Kind of an odd thing, but sure. Um, I guess that's how uh, it's the fullness over here. But anyway, we'll do that. And yeah, we have a deficit, but that's okay. It's only gonna be a problem while we're running this. What else might we want? Well, if you Google something like Imicus Fit, you will find other recommendations for these other slots. Um, one thing you could do is you could fit one thing that's a turret over here, uh, which would be quite nice. That can be a gun to defend yourself with. There's also drones over here. Now, I'm going to leave the drones off for a future tutorial. Or am I? They're, they're so useful for defending ourselves here. Yeah, we'll leave off the drones. What I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the ship outfitted with just this. Then I'm going to put a cut in here. I'm going to try to find a, a good system for us to scan, and then we'll pick it up. Uh, once I have found that. 
So I will be right back. Okay, so uh, I was using the agency screen over here, checked exploration, and found a system. The uh, I think that's another I, because I think that's a capital, so this must be the even Evenin system? I want to say living in, but yeah, I think that's an I. Anyway, it's got seven signatures in here. It's still high security at 0.7, so it should be relatively safe. That sounds good to me. So I'm just making the jump. It's just uh, two more jumps away. We're nearly there. And then we'll go and check that out. You can see it's a bunch of unknown cosmic signatures at this time. Now, again, this loadout I did, I just put in the minimum, right? The probe core scanners, the two analyzers, and just for quality of life, a micro warp drive. You're not going to want to go naked like this, generally speaking, unless you want a ship that's truly fully disposable, I suppose. Um, but it would be a good idea to... We'll be loading up combat probes, but we're going to save that for an, a follow-up video. Combat probes would really help a lot to defend you. You can put in one gun. A salvaging module is actually quite nice as well. You're going to want some stuff in your low slots to buff some of your other activities, maybe give you some defenses, and you might even want some rigs for that. But again, sort of Google it. Um... As an example, I actually do have, uh, oh, not on this account, right? I was going to say I have some saved fits for that, but um, no, not on this account. I do not. You do have to be a little bit nervous if you're in lower security zones. I mean, that's always the case. If you're in lower security zones, let alone null sec or wormhole space, um, you always have to be kind of nervous and, and paranoid. But scanning and exploring in particular can be kind of a scary thing to do because you can spend, you might have to spend a fair amount of time in system, more or less kind of standing still while you're trying to um, uh, scan down some stuff. And then to follow that up, when you go to hacking sites, you're going to be in a particular zone, uh, area that people might be able to find, and you might be sort of standing still for a little bit trying to hack down the site as well. During all those situations, you're fairly vulnerable. And in high security zones, if someone did try something, they'd probably just get blown up by the space cops. But in low security zones, that's not the case. So you may have to defend yourself. You may have, want to invest in cloaking technology, which unfortunately isn't available to free alpha characters. And there's also a variety of techniques to move around and sort of dodge some problems. And if you do some Googling, you can find a lot of advice about that. Look up things like safe spots and whatnot. Um, but this is not going to apply here. And you can still do a fair amount of stuff in relatively high security areas like this one. So we got a handful of anomalies in the system. Um, normally, if I was in wormhole space or something like that, I'd want to make sure to get away from where I started. But in this case, it where the heck's the gate? I want um, track. There it is, down below. It's fairly good defended areas, a bunch of like defensive turrets and stuff like that. I'm going to be okay. The cops will, will get involved if anything bad happens. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to launch my probes. Oh, I, I have to cloak from the jump. You can't do anything. I'm just going to double click to start a move, and then I'll pause again or hit uh, control space bar or this button here to stop the ship, I'm no longer cloaked. So now I can launch my probes. We'll open up the map. There are six. Oh, there were seven before. Someone must have scanned something down. Six cosmic anomalies over here. And we're going to just pick one arbitrarily. This one here. We're going to move our scanners over to here. And that way, try to center it up. You can see the circle is quite large here, so I'll bring the probe size up to 8 AU. So that's not very fine resolution, but it'll hopefully catch something. And we'll start with this. Now, in addition to the data sites and the relic sites that we were talking about as something good to grab, we may find a couple other things. One of the things we might find are wormholes. Okay, this signature, we've got a 14% signal on it. So we'll double click. It'll center it up a little bit more. We'll do this. I'm going to drop the probe size down to 4 AU and hope that it's still within that. If I do this analysis and then it with a 0% over here, it means it's not in this 4 AU range and I'll have to embiggen my, my scan again a little bit to try to zoom in. Anomalies tend to be within 4 AU of a planet or something like that, so you can sort of optimize. Oh, there we go. It's a wormhole. So I'm at, as soon as you hit above 25% signal strength, it'll identify what kind of thing this is. This is a wormhole, scanning difficulty 1, so it should be fairly easy to track down. And this will go to a wormhole space system. So again, I'm going to recenter and shrink my size a little bit, and we'll do some more analysis here. This will go to a wormhole space. Wormhole space has tons of really valuable things, but zero security. Enter at your own risk, but also enter at your own huge rewards. We won't cover this in the tutorial, but it's worth doing, especially if you can afford to lose a ship, get in there and give it a try. So we're at 57%. There's no real reason for me to scan all this one down if I'm not planning on going through. In fact, I should probably go and focus on one of these other signatures. Uh, most systems will have one or two wormholes at any given point. These wormholes are unstable. They tend to only last for maybe, say, a day, and then they will collapse. Um, yeah, I'll just scan down another site over here. 
Um, so you do have to like, you know, keep rediscovering wormholes all the time. And yeah, it also means that if you take a wormhole and go into wormhole space, it's possible that at some point, if you spend too long in there, the wormhole you came in through will collapse behind you and you won't be able to get back to your system that you initially came from. Have no fear, wormhole systems are always guaranteed to have some wormholes leading out of it. it. Just might not be where you came from, but you can, you know, get back to normal space, figure out where you are, and then try to make your way home at some point later on. So we only got a 2.6% over here. We don't know what the scanning difficulty on the site is yet. High difficulty sites will be very hard for you to narrow down until you get a fair amount more skills and maybe the more advanced probe cores like from the Sisters of Eve. Okay. Now we've got a little bit more, and we've got the sensor echo thing. So this site that we're trying to lock down is either somewhere near here or somewhere near here. We don't know which one of these two it is. I'm going to put my probe scan kind of in the middle between the two and see if that can narrow it down. If this doesn't work, what I can do instead is I can center up around one of these two knobs and, um, you know, hope. 50-50 chance. It's either this one or this one. Again, there's various tricks with other astronomical bodies that might help you get it a little faster, but we'll see. Okay, 9%. Okay, a little closer. We know it's somewhere around here instead of the echo, so that's good. I'll center up. I'm going to bring my scan size down to 2 AU. Hopefully it's within there at this point. We'll see. We still don't know what the scanning difficulty is. I'm getting the sense it might be a little bit harder than a difficulty 1 because it's being a little tricksy to pin down. More difficult to scan down sites do tend to be more valuable. All right, we're getting a little closer at 14%. So we'll center up there. I'll bring it down here. I'll see if I can bring down the probe size again. If it is within, if, if you have your probe size small, but you're, the thing you're looking for actually is in there, you will get a huge percentage boost quite quickly. But there's a possibility it's not within this zone. Come on, baby. Whoa. Oh, it's a combat site. Okay. I'm not interested. That's the other thing that you can potentially scan down, and it is a level 2 thing for scanning difficulty. I'm not interested in going to a combat site, uh, because I don't have any weapons on the ship. But if I did, including just drones, it might be worth going in there, depending on the difficulty of the combat site. And again, if you load up the, uh, the scanning wiki, if you just Google it, you will find a list of all the different site names. Like, there's a couple of combat sites already identified in the system. The Garistus Refuge and Garistus Hideaway. One of these is slightly higher level than the other. Um, and the wiki will tell you what those are. So you can sort of gauge the threat to different things. But, you know, higher risk, higher reward. Those combat sites are just filled with, like, non-player character enemies, though. So you don't actually have to worry about... Uh, unless another player just happens to go out there, you don't have to worry about... You know, you're not going there to fight other players. Especially in a high-security zone like this, it's basically a non-issue. Unless someone's just trying to commit suicide, in which case... Okay, I guess they can do that. Oh, I actually didn't get better than 14% here. So I'm going to try to recenter up on this thing again. I'll try to bring down the probe size, but we might miss it. This is another hard thing to scan. And sometimes this will be the case, especially when you're early on like this. It can sometimes be a little bit difficult to get these scans down. And sometimes you spend, you know, minutes trying to get this all the way down. And all of a sudden you discover, oh, all I've got is a, co uh, a combat site or something I'm not interested in. That's another combat site. These may all be combat sites. I often find sometimes things have a bit of a theme like that in a system. That is entirely possible. We got two more to go. We'll see. Push comes to shove. We could always try going through the wormhole, uh, even though it's insanely dangerous. Now, one of the things to do, if you do go to a more dangerous site, low earth security zone, or especially like wormhole sites, Renault sec or whatever, you may want to know if someone is hunting you. Um, how much site combat site? Do I still have 0% on you? Crazy. I'm bigging you again, and we'll see. Um, and we should talk about the directional scanner at this point. On the scanner button, there's a directional scanner button, uh, which by default is docked to the uh, the map. I'm going to go ahead and undock it, bring it up over here. Now, with the D-scan window open, directional scan, you will see this green blob over here. This shows you the area covered by the directional scan. Now, by default, the directional scan tends to have, well, a direction. Right? It's a forward arc. You're, you're facing forward, and you're going to scan in this kind of direction. But you can go and set it to a 360-degree angle. You can also choose the range of the D-scan over here. You can just have it scan relatively nearby or as far as possible. Now, whenever you make an adjustment, it runs a scan. You can also just hit the scan button here. You can actually spam this very often. I think the default hotkey is V. I don't think I set that. If I just keep hitting V, it'll scan. And what this is going to do, this is going to list every object in space 
within here. Every non-cloaked object in space within this list will show up. And what's, the reason this is kind of important is if you're in a dangerous area and you do a D-scan, now note we can find scanner probes here. These are my probes actually. Core scanner probes are just doing what we're doing here, which is trying to track down anomalies. If you see combat scanner probes in here, that's someone trying to scan and find ships in this system. And if you're in a low security zone and you hit your D-scan and you see combat scanner probes, someone might be looking for you to try to like pinpoint where you are so they can warp to you and kill you. If you see combat scanner probes, you want to leave. That's general rule of thumb in there. Um, sometimes you'll also see other ships. For example, here's Alv's Condor. And, you know, whether that, that's a threat or not, well, depends on where you are. Ten, normally, if you're in NullSec or if you're in um, Wormhole Space, which also has no security, seeing another ship is usually a, ah, I got to get out of here thing. Unless it's a small ship or something like that, it might be fine. You don't know. But that's the D-Scan. D-Scan is everyone's best friend for security. You're going to want to spam this fairly often, especially when you're doing other scanning. So um, over here, we are trying to narrow down... Uh, a cosmic signature here and having a heck of a hard time. We've got a sensor echo on it. We'll go ahead and cent center our view on one of these two blops. I'm going to just guess maybe it's this top one and do that. If it fails, I'll move to the bottom one over here. But I'm trying to narrow down this cosmic signature and hope it's not a combat site so we can actually show up some good hack. And here's the thing. Good hacks can net you millions of isk in a single trip. Oh, all right, a little bit more. Still only 7.4%, but at least we're in the right neighborhood now. Do this. I'm going to bring it down to 2 AU and hope that we can get something here. If I, if I completely fail to find a good site, well, that's a little bit disappointing. Because it would be nice to show off the hacking. Come on, baby. Daddy needs a new pair of something. Oh, my God. Now, I think it's going to be too difficult to scan this one. And we're doing all this. It's probably just going to end up being another combat site. I won't shrink it down. I'll just recenter. Again, the whole time I would normally be hitting V and, and watching out for things. You can change these filters as well to different types of categories, and you can tune it in all kinds of different things so you can ignore certain stuff that you don't care about. For example, do we really need to show uh, space stations on this? Not really. 15%. All right, we're getting a little closer. I might try to drop it down to 1 AU and hope that it's within range here. So I'm going to close the D-Scanner window because I don't actually need it in this system because it's fairly safe, and then those green lines go away. Oh, baby, a data site. Okay, it's still only 29%. This is a hard one. It's level 3 to scan down. Oof. Even if we scan it down, we might not be able to hack it. If I bring it up, are we lucky enough that it's actually in this 0.5 AU range? Come on, baby. I'm actually really pumped. This should be fairly valuable if we can get there. Of course, someone else could be scanning down the system at the same time. Might find it before I do and loot it before I do. Ooh, okay, 60%. All right, all right, all right. We're getting a little closer. Center up a little bit more. I'm going to do one more analysis, and then I'll probably shrink it down a bit. But since we're a little bit better centered, we should hopefully get a little bit above 60, and then I'll shrink it down. This is a really, because this is a high difficulty thing. Normally, if you do the tutorial, they're all difficulty one. You know, like pinpoint something super fast. Oh, we're still at exactly the same percentage. It's entirely possible that even at 0.25 AU, I may not be able to actually pinpoint the site as a result of lack of skills um, and uh, the equipment. Cross your fingers. 0.7, I may have wanted to stay at a 0.8 or 0.9 sec. Oh, I got it! Nice! Okay, local Grista patrol, or what's the full name of this thing? production installation. Each one of these data and relic sites will have a name. Oh, you should not warp to zero like I did. You should probably warp maybe 100 kilometers away and, and spot to make sure it's okay. Each one of these sites will have the name of one of these factions, um, but despite having one of these pirate faction names in it, they will generally be empty. There are a couple of different relic and data sites that will have enemies there, and they'll probably be too hard for you to fight. Um, and weirdly enough, I think they'll be called either Ruined Relic Site or Forgotten Data Site. They're not so forgotten or ruined. Oh, there is someone else over here doing hacking. See, there's someone on the list. So what I want to do is I want to go to one of these um, sites as quickly as possible and take it before he takes everything. I don't know where he is. I suppose I could throw a lock on him to track. 
but I'm going to go to this info shard here. Now I'm going to have to hack it, and this is a difficulty 3 site, so the hack is going to be pretty difficult, especially since I don't have much in the way of skills and things. But, um, this was a, what, a relic site? Oh, no, it's a data. I couldn't remember which. Alright, so we'll try the hack. Two, two, one, one. We don't know what this is. This is unknown. I'm going to leave it here for a second. It could be a bad thing or a good thing. So I'm still trying to get my counts to go down. Four, three, two. Okay, here we've got a defensive firewall. I, I'm going to try to avoid fighting that if I can. Oh, we got another one. I'm going to have to fight one of these two. I only have 50 hit points, 25 damage. I can hit one of these twice. Okay, three, two, one. Oh, this is a repair thing. I picked this up, hit this item, and I'm now going to repair every time I click. I'm going to repair a little bit. <sighs> sort of got dead ended again here. I'm going to take. A bit, I'm going to click this and see what it is. Ah, lovely. This is a utility subsystem that will do damage to someone when I use it on them. It halves their defenses. So I'll go ahead and use it on this guy. Brings him down to twenty, so now I can kill him with one hit. The oh. Capacitors and oh my right board warp drive. Um, so I'll repair utility one. This is not going well. Four. Um. All right, I'll fight this one. Antivirus does more damage, but is squishier. Hey, anyway, I'll hit this one first. One. Oh, so it's right over here. I got to go through this guy. I have very few hit points left. Okay, there's a the system core. Um, I, I can tap it twice to kill it, and it won't kill me. Boom! We have hacked this. Now I can open this and loot some carbon and a simple descriptor. Oh, the sim this, or symmetry decryptor. Oh, it's worth 600,000 isk. Guys, that's all. Just a half a million isk. You know, not a big deal. So the other player is probably going over and hacking this last site as we speak. Uh, let me unlock this old one. We've locked a new one. When we're within 5,000, we'll be able to start a hack on this. So, just wait for it. 5,000, yep. I'm going to try to hack this as fast as I can. Uh, two, one. Oh, a wrench. We can use it right away to start gaining more strength. Because you can go above your, your initial thing. Can we go around this at all? Four, three, two, one. Two, one. Uh, that could be a bad thing or a good thing, so we're going to hold up on it. There's the system core. Boom, boom, boom. Get hacked, and give me loot. Oh, there you go. Process decryptor. So look at this. We made 1.3 million isk on this one data site. And to me, it's a lot more exciting than mining. It took a long time for us to scan down, unfortunately. But that was pretty good. There's still another cosmic signature we don't know here. Now, you don't tend to want to stick around these data sites. These presumably, yeah, they've all been hacked and presumably have been opened and looted and things like that. Um, because someone else might come to spot them at this point. Once everything has been looted, the site will leave the list. Notice the data site's no longer on this list. So probably what we'll want to do is warp to some random place. Ideally a safe bookmark, but that's a that's a topic for another um, another episode. We'll just warp away from here. I'm kind of tempted to uh, see if we can scan the last site. Let's give it a try. So while we're warping, we can still do stuff. So I'll double click the center up here. I'll move my scanner probes way over here, line it up roughly that way and increase the size to cover this whole circle. Hopefully it's a little easier to find. Oh, we could actually use the 4AU trick over here. So, anomalies tend to be within 4AU of a planetary body or something like that. So most likely it's somewhere in here. We'll, uh, there you go. So what you can do is you can set your probe size to 4AU and center it between these two. Make sure it overlaps this and the other thing and almost certainly it'll be somewhere in the center of all these probes, which is where your signal is the strongest, so that's where you want to scan things. And you've a very good chance that you get a fairly decent bead on this thing. We'll see what it is. Oh, it's a wormhole. Well, you know what? Do we want to check out the wormhole? Just real quick? Let's do it. Let's scan down this wormhole. So we'll bring down to a 2AU range. Again, wormholes don't show up in your warp two or anything like that. Once you've found it, you can bookmark it, though. And you can actually share bookmarks with other people, including your corporation and whatnot. Yeah, we'll talk about bookmarks here um, as soon as we track down this wormhole. And in particular, it'll be very important to, to bookmark our exit point of the wormhole. But we'll wait on that. 
Come on. And yeah, we could be descanning here, you know, keeping track of threats. And you're sort of looking for those combat probes. This is a safe system. You don't have to worry about it. Ah, okay, we found our wormhole. Excellent. So now that we've, that we've fully scanned it, I can warp to it. I can also, at this point, save location. Um, so this SBD-788 unstable wormhole, I mean, we can call it whatever we want. That sounds good. I will submit this. You got a pin on the map, which is kind of neat. So I can warp to the wormhole by warping to it here because it's green. We fully scanned it, 100%. The other thing is, if we go over here to our Neocom menu and we look at personal and people and places. And in fact, this is so important. I like to right click on this and add a shortcut. So it's always here on the left hand side. This lets you remember all your contacts, any agents you know about, as well as places you have bookmarked. Now, if, you, if you're on a mission, they, your agent mission stuff will show up there, but I just made my own personal bookmark right here, unstable wormhole. It's zero jumps away because it's in the system that I'm in. Anything that's in the system you're in will be highlighted in green like this. It tells you when you did it, it's very handy. So I can right click on this and warp to it as well. I can share this even when this wormhole is gone, I can always warp to this pin. It's the only way you can warp to something that isn't otherwise just on your list. So we're gonna go ahead and warp to this wormhole. I can't queue up the jump through or anything like that, but that's okay. Do, do, do. I'm going to recall my probes just so I can reload my launcher right away before we go through the next system. It takes 10 seconds to reload. That's fine. Again, your probes will be automatically recalled when you leave the system or if you dock or something like that. So we're going to jump to this wormhole. Boom. Here it is. It looks pretty cool. If we uh, right click on this wormhole, and show info. Oh, no, I gotta click on the actual pin in the middle here. Although, now that we're close to the wormhole, hold on. Now that we're near the wormhole, it does show up on the overview. It didn't before, but now it does. If we go and show info, tells us a little bit about it, leads to unknown areas of space. It's beginning to decay, probably won't last another day. Um, ships up to medium size can pass through this. Some can accept only small, some can go all the way to large. The larger the ship that goes through a wormhole tends to destabilize it as well. Let's go through it. What could possibly go wrong? So we're going to enter a wormhole, and I think we'll get a warning. By default on your account, you should get a warning when you're going through to a system that could be super dangerous. Let's see what happens here. So we're approaching it. Oh, yeah, we're fairly far. Maybe give it a little micro orb, micro drive. There you go, the unknown. Concord, the space cops, won't be able to protect us here. Yeah, I'll go through. If I lose this ship, it can replace it. I have enough money to replace the ship. I do have a, over a million isk worth of loot in my cargo hold, and that would hurt to lose right now. But there you go. Welcome to wormhole space for the first time. Now, I'm going to do something real quick here. I'm just going to go ahead and save this wormhole to be able to demonstrate something. Now, a directional scanner here becomes very important. Okay, the system is mostly empty. This is just, I think, a cargo container of some kind. Nothing to worry about. Now, one of the ways to often know if there's a threat nearby is you check the local chat. And you can look at the names of everyone who's in the system, and you can see if there's someone in there or if there's someone bad. Notice we see no names in here. In fact, I don't even see my own name. In wormhole space, no names show up in the list of people in the channel unless someone actually says something. Right, corp, huge people. Normally, names in here in systems, not in wormhole space. Now, our um, cloak timer is about to run out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to warp away from this wormhole because there's no there's no protection in this system. I don't want to wait here until something pops through. So I'm just going to warp to a random planet. I'm not going to warp right on top of it. I'm going to warp within 100 kilometers. Active. So I'm just going to get out of there. Now here's the thing. Someone could still find me. I'm going to keep hitting scan here because someone could be using those combat probes to detect me. It looks like the system is empty, which is great. Here's the thing. What if all of a sudden I'm like, you know what? I have to get out of here. I have to get back home. Um, how, how do I do that? How do you return to the system where you just were? Because here's the thing. That wormhole doesn't show up on this list. That wormhole we just came through is not on this list at all. And you don't exist, like on this map, this, this wormhole system that we're in is not a system on this map. We are nowhere. We're, you know, we're, we're over here somewhere connected to nothing. We are lost. Well, that's why when you come into a wormhole system like I just did, what you should do is right click on the wormhole and make a bookmark for it. Now you can bookmark anything. I can write, I can bookmark this planet. So let's say I save location, you know, some planet. There, I can make a bookmark for that. 
I bookmarked the wormhole as I came in. If I hit my people in places, you can see a few things. First of all, there's this thing. This was the entrance. This is where we came in from. The... Um, that's another ship that just went by. I'm very nervous here. I think it was. Maybe it was just a random comment. Anyway, if we die, it's okay. Um, that's where we came in. But notice it's unreachable. The game, we don't know how to get back there. Um, but I bookmarked this wormhole entrance over here. Just a random coordinate in space, as far as the game is concerned. But I can right-click on this and warp back to the wormhole. Just like I can warp back to this planet. When you're going through wormhole space, this is very, very, very important. Now, the other thing that's very important when you're in a dangerous place like wormhole space is to not sit somewhere near any kind of point of interest, like near a planet or a wormhole or a structure or anything like this. You want to sit in the middle of nowhere. How do you do that? Well, what you can do is... Uh, so I'm at this planet. I'm at the second planet. I'm going to start warping towards planet number five. And rather than right-click to make a bookmark, um, I'm going to hit a button on people and places to add location. I'm going to hit this, and when I'm halfway through the warp, I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to hit submit. The location only locks in when you hit submit. Not when you hit add location, but when you actually save it. So I have this pin that's somewhere between planet two and planet five. So now that I've done that, I'm going to warp back to it. Warp drive. So I'm warping to a sort of random point in space between two planets where, in theory, no traffic should ever go. In theory, no one will ever accidentally run into me over here. In practice, that's not always the case, but in theory, I shouldn't get run into by anyone. Someone can still find me if your, your D-scan shows combat probes. They could find me in the middle of nowhere and warp to me and kill me if they want, because there's no security here. But so far, if I'm D-scanning and I don't see anything, Feeling pretty good. The other thing is, if I launch my probes, remember, if I descan, I see my core probes, other players will as well. If they come into the system and they descan and see a bunch of core scanner probes, they know someone is in the system trying to hunt down these sites. Wormhole space is awesome, very profitable, but you'll probably lose some ships here. Doesn't mean you shouldn't do it, though. So um, let's pick a. So one of these cosmic signatures, interestingly enough, will be my wormhole. If we find, where's my wormhole pin? Oh, right here. See how there's a pin here? That's my wormhole. One of these anomalies actually is that wormhole. So what I can do is I can center the map on this pin. I can do this and do this and then shrink it way down the probe size right on my, right on my bookmark. Descan, okay, still looking good. It should be constantly descanning. I'm gonna analyze right on my bookmark and miracle of miracle, we should find a wormhole there. And what it'll do, it'll take it out of the list. We'll know that that one's gone, so we'll start scanning something more significant here. Okay, still good. Still good on the D-scan. I'm hitting it constantly. Hey, look at that. There's a wormhole over here. What a surprise. Apparently, I didn't quite land on it. This feels a little surprising, but sure. The pin graphic is, I guess, floats maybe a little bit offset. That would make some sense. Uh, I'll bring the probe size down to 0.5. I just want to kind of get it out of the list. And the advantage now, too, is I'll be able to warp to this directly without having to go through my bookmarks instead. So there we go. That'll be handy. Still won't show up in the outliner or the overview, but it'll show up over here. I'm hitting V to descan constantly. There you go. That's found. Let's take a look for another cosmic signature. We've got one over here. Center up on it that way. Center up on it this way. We'll embiggen this to about 8 AU. Do a scan. I keep hitting V to descan. I can descan during the whole time. Again, I want this at 360 because I want to scan all around me. Even though it's a directional scan, I'm setting the direction to 360 degrees. All right. So we're getting not much of a signal, but some. We got 11% on this one. That's why I like sorting it by strength. And I'm always just mostly trying to track down the highest strength one. We'll bring it down to 4 AU. If we can get a data site here or a relic site. Relic sites tend to be more valuable than data sites, by the way. Um... Oh, there's a Helios in this system. A Helios is one of the other exploration ships. They're probably doing what we're doing. It is a relic site. They have disappeared. They, it's possible they've got a cloak equipped. Cloaked ships don't show up on D-scans. Or it's possible he saw me and was like, I'm not staying here. Or they were just passing through. That's possible too. Keep spamming this. Or he's switching to another character that's got an attack ship. And he's going to come kill me. Either another character or he's literally just docked somewhere and sw swapping his ships in and out. Now, there are no, as far as I know, uh, other than maybe like 
you know, a couple of special places. There are no real um, NPC stations in wormhole space. Uh, no, I guess there are some. Um, but um, mostly, like, you, players can set up stations in wormhole space. And, you know, if you're friends with those people, or if they're just a corporation that have their doors open, you can dock at those stations. You can make it sort of your home. Although, oh, there we go. Oh, okay, see how this says ruined? There's going to be bad guys here. I will demonstrate. I'm going to warp to within 100 kilometers. This ruined site, I think the ruined sites and forgotten sites are filled with um, enemy NPCs. I'm going to keep my uh, places and people thing open. I'm going to be ready to warp back to my random little spot in space over here. Descanning, descanning, no threats, that's good. Go to the general tab. When we get here, we should see a bunch of red blips here. Uh, I thought. Or maybe not. I might be remembering their names wrong. Okay, let me warp... Um, let me warp to here. You can warp to something as long as it's 150 kilometers away, which in this case these are. So we're just going to try to warp a little closer to one of these rebel, rubble bits. I'm going to bring in my probe scanners. So there's fewer things for someone to catch on a D-scan. So I'm a little bit more hidden. Okay, so this rubble over here... Yeah, I know, specialized equipment. Yes, but we're going to hack it. Um, right, let me go and just do this. And... Relic. Okay. Oh, it's a big grid. Two, two, one. Okay, we might want to pop that later. Okay, I'm going to pop it now. Ah, see, it can be a bad guy, or it can be loot. I was a little bit greedy there. We probably will fail this hack. So, there's a one, so there's actually something that's still there, and we're going further away. Yeah, uh, one... Maybe we get lucky. Okay. Uh, let me do this to bring you to half. And then we'll bop you. Oh, okay. A wrench to heal ourselves with. Mm, three, two, one. There's the probe core. Can we beat it? Yes, we can. Oh, my God. Nice. Open this bad boy up. Look at this. 2.5 million. Amazing. D-scan, D-scan. This is so good. Can we do a few others? Let's uh, fly to this other one. Let's turn on the micro-warp drive for a little bit of speed. Um, I can unlock that target. D-scan. Okay. Nothing bad. Now, there could be someone sitting here cloaked the whole time. They could be closing in on me. I've seen it happen plenty of times. Uh, this thing here, we need to hack. Two, one, one. Okay, unknown over there. One, unknown there. Could be a, a helpful thing, could be a bad guy. Uh, two, one... Wrench, we'll use that immediately. D-scan, okay, nothing there. Try to dodge that for now. Two. Uh, one, there's something right over there. Okay, I'll try to blow through this guy. Ow, that hurts a lot. There's a system core. Oh, it's yellow. This is a level two um, reward here. Boom, done. Pop you. 5.6 million in loot. Nothing on the D-scan. Do we keep pushing our luck? Sure, what could possibly go wrong, right? We're going to go for the next one. D-scan, nothing on the list. As far as we know, there's no one in here uh, at this time. Uh, relic. Oh my god, I'm so nervous. Ugh. We might just get blown up by a random player who decides to, uh, to hit us. And you know what? That's the thing, risk and reward. Okay, this spiky thing, this is a restoration node. It'll actually heal other nodes, their, uh, their hit points. You have to take these out the second you find them. Otherwise, you're never going to be able to beat anyone else. Um, oh, there's another one here. Yeah, we're not going to be able to succeed in this hack. We do get a second try, so we will try it. Okay, still nothing on D-scan. We're going to try again. Uh, yeah, we'll use the wrench right away. Try to dodge that. Uh, one. Oh, that is guarding something. There's something probably right there. Uh, well, I guess we'll have to go through you, but we're gonna get blown up, and then that's gonna blow up. Okay, I'm not gonna push my luck any more than this because these hacking sites are actually really deeply hard. I'm gonna go ahead and warp to my exit wormhole right over here, and I'm just gonna go home and cash in my. What's my inventory over here? 9.6 million isk of exploration stuff.
You guys, this is why exploration is so amazing. I'm sitting here sweating, like my hands are shaking, my palms are just, just covered in sweat. I'm so nervous. But look at this hull. And you do just feel like you ninja it, but don't don't push your luck. Go go back home, empty your stuff. So now that we're at the wormhole, we can go ahead and uh, enter the wormhole, and we'll be back in high security space, where unless someone decides to suicide on us, we are relatively safe. And yeah, I'm gonna go and uh, park this stuff somewhere. Now, where's my loot? Where's my home? Where's where's the system where I have all my stuff? Does anyone remember? If you've forgotten the name, here's a cool trick. You got a button on your Neocom here for personal assets. It's on here by default, but if for some reason it's not, you can go and find it under personal? No. Ah, uh, inventory. Inventory, personal assets. This will list every every place in the entire galaxy where you have some stuff. It so happens for me, the only stuff I have is over here at that Federal Navy Academy. Oh yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. Federal Navy Academy is not really somewhere you want to make your home base because... It's not that handy. Instead, you're going to want to find one of the major trade hubs and hang out there. Um, the You can just Google the list of trade hubs uh, to find out where the big one is for you. For me, here in Galente Space, it's the Dixie system. So ultimately, I'm going to want to move over there. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and set my destination to Couster. And I'm going to go ahead and fly back over there with all my sweet, sweet, sweet loot. Now, what am I going to do with this stuff? That's a great question. Um, so first of all, just to organize this, I'm going to right click and stack all so my core probes are stacked together properly. Here, we'll sort by price as well. Contaminated nanite compound. I have 57 of it and it's worth a ton. What the heck do you use this for? Well, I'm going to right click, show info. You don't use it for anything by itself, but under industry, these are all the blueprint recipes that would use this. This is something that you use in crafting. You know, fairly decent level crafting as well. Some fairly specialized stuff, not much in the way of just basic recipes over here. This may be something that you're going to want to save for yourself. I guess some of these are pretty basic, actually. But most likely, especially at the start of the game, it's not going to be worth for you... Let me do another jump. Let me put on autopilot. It may not be worth it for you to go and save this for crafting. Because you're going to need to invest in a fair number of things to start, you know, doing interesting crafting that'll turn a profit. You're going to start to have to start understanding the economy of the game as well. Plus some of these, like the decryptor over here, or apparently I'm wrong. Some of these things are used for um, researching blueprint upgrades and different things like that that honestly I'm not too much of a master of. And... Um, so you'll need a bunch of specialized skills to even make use of them. Most likely, you're just going to want to sell this. And that's one of the reasons you're going to want to find your primary sort of trading post in your area. You want to go want to go there and just sell this stuff on the market. I mean, why wouldn't I want to sell this for 8 million isk? I mean, my current value, I have currently worth 1.7 million. So my net worth is just going to go up by like a ton over here. We'll call it going from 2 to going to... 10 and change depending on the sale price of things like that so you know five to six times my net worth is is the transformation from one pretty nifty little exploration thing so if you like exploration what kind of stuff are you going to want to look for well again all the stuff in the scanning category here and there are even more if you go to all skills oh okay this is a bad example um there's only one more skill all these will help with various things, either letting you scan things down quicker with your probes or letting you hack easier because you're going to have more hit points on your virus over here, which is hugely valuable if you want to do exploration. The other thing you're going to want is a certain amount of just ship sort of combat and survival skills so that if you do get attacked by something, maybe you've got a moment to respond. Um, you might want things that help you move faster. You might want this or that. Those are all possibilities. The other thing that you might want to invest in at some point, you, trading skills. Trading skills are quite good for letting you sell things, maybe at slightly less tax rates or being able to sell things at range and doing various things like that, which is handy dandy. But those are the basics. You'll also potentially want to go and um, look at the ship tree over here and consider it like a ship that you might want to work your way towards that may also have other good scanning abilities. Um, so, yeah, the cheetah over here. I was going to say, wait, I don't recognize this name. Yeah, it's because I'm looking at the Minmatar ships. This is a very advanced ship. It's worth 30 million isk just for the hull itself, let alone the parts. Um, but it also has the probe core strength. It's got like more of that and more bonuses to your hacking strength as well. It's really strong. It can fit really good cloaking devices and whatnot. Now, these are locked behind Omega. 
Um, actually, all cloaking devices are locked behind Omega. But, you know, so you can sort of plan and be like, okay, if, let's, let's say you want to be uh, able to fly a cheetah, how would you do it? Right click on the cheetah, go show info, and there's a requirements tab. This is all the skills that you need to be able to fly this. You would need Minmatar Frigate 5 skill. The level 5 skill for this is actually locked behind Omega as well. That's the reason, like the Omega lock over here. You'd need level 5 skill for this, and it would take a long time to train, 28 days. You'd also need some covert op skills, which requires electronic skills, and so on and so forth. This tells you what you need to fly this ship. But we aren't Omega, so, all right, we can't do this. But here's a question. Let's say I'm happy. Let me go over to um, Galente over here. Let's say I'm happy with the Imicus. And it is. The Imicus is dirt cheap, easy to replace. So if you get destroyed in um, in wormhole space, you're fine. The only thing, the, the thing that'll be the true value on this ship is any loot you might have. As example, I'm carrying around 10 million isk worth of loot in a ship that's not even worth 1 million isk, right? So that's why in this game, in EVE, ships are cheap. You don't want, and, and you want, you don't ever want to invest all your money in the baddest, biggest ship you, you need or you can get because there's no point. S much cheaper ships are going to do 99% of the same jobs without the same risk. But anyway, so let's say this Imicus. Okay, we want to be really good at exploring. What skills might be good for exploring? Ooh, I don't know. Well, it's not a perfect system, but if you right click and go show info, in addition to the requirements tab, so the Imicus, we only need Galente 1, Spaceship Command 1, That's easy peasy. In addition to that, there's a Mastery tab. Now, the Mastery tab has five different levels of Mastery for this ship. These Mastery levels mean nothing by themselves. There's no difference between someone with a level 1 Mastery and level 2 Mastery. Like, in and of itself, it does nothing. But what it does is it sort of hints at some skills that would be quite good with this ship design. For example, to achieve Mastery level 1 with the Imicus, it wants a certain level of scanning skills. Hey, we happen to have all those. Certain level of navigation and so on and so forth. We have all these. But... We don't have all the armor tanking skills. So the Imicus and a lot of the Galente ships tend to be quite good at what's called armor tanking, i.e. the bulk of its hit points, its effective hit points in combat, as well as its ability to regenerate, is often going to be highly oriented around armor, as opposed to shields, for example. So the game says, hey, maybe it would be a good idea for you to have these three skills, and the one we're missing is Repair Systems 1. So we should have the first rank of repair systems. Um, this will uh, give us the ability to use certain modules, these armor and hull repair modules, which, hint, hint, might do well with an Imicus. Okay, tell you what, I'll mouse over here. I don't have the skill book. I actually can't add repair systems to my queue right now. I need to buy a skill book for it. But luckily, um, many of the low-level skills can just be bought remotely and automatically from the game. So for 58,000 ISK, which is nothing, I can buy this skill. I can either hit this button to just buy the skill book, or if I hit buy and train, it will A, buy the skill book, and B, queue it up, which is why it's in blue over here. And if I take a look at my character sheet, you can see repair systems. Hey, it only takes 16 minutes. I'm going to go ahead and put that up above spaceship command. Excellent. So in 16 minutes, I'll have unlocked the repair systems. And if I mouse over here, these are all the items that I'll be able to use um, right away. So for example, the small hull repair. Hey, that's pretty good. Maybe I'll want to buy some of those, throw them on my Imicus. Because the idea is if you start taking damage, you can go and activate the small hull repair, and it'll just repair your damage on the fly. Hey, that's pretty cool. Um, what else? Okay, so that would bring us to level 1 mastery of the Imicus. If we click on level 2, we'll see more skills in here, like, oh, data and relic analyzers. It's suggestion suggesting that maybe you, maybe you should get your hacking and your archaeology both to level 2. Well, that sounds pretty good to me. Okay, I'll add it to the queue. Oh, I didn't want to do that. Uh, level 2, I'm going to go and say, all right, we'll train level 2 archaeology and hacking. There we go. It's also saying, hey, maybe you want to get some more navigation, er, some na navigation skills. Maybe you should have acceleration control. It gives you a 5% boost to afterburners and micro warp drive speeds. Ooh, that does sound very useful. Tell you what, I'll buy and train that as well. Now, some of these skills, some of these mastery things, you don't truly need, okay? This is sort of a built-in idea of the game of like, these are skills that you, you may find useful. You may find useful while flying an Imicus. It's not guaranteed that this is like, oh, this is going to make break the difference. Like, you might not care at all about any armor tanking here. But of course, if you're doing exploration, this is a pretty good hint of like stuff you might want to do. So let's say we go all the way up to level four mastery. And we see like, you know, it thinks if you want to be this good, really you want to get your hacking and archaeology up quite a lot, all the way to level four. Oh, that sounds good. Technically, we can't reach level four on an alpha account, but we can at least train to level three. So it won't, uh, it won't let us queue up level four, but that's okay. 
Oh, right, and I can't fit it in the uh, training queue because I have more than a day worth of stuff. That That is also true. I forgot about that. Um... But yeah, we can we can finish those. Certainly the repair systems. So again, that's kind of a good hint. If you if you see a ship and you're sort of interested in flying it, like without without Omega, we can go all the way up to battleships. We can't get to dreadnoughts, or as I like to say it, dreadnoughts. But we can go all the way up to battleships. That's kind of crazy. What if we want to eventually learn to fly a Megathron? Ooh, right click, show info, take a look at the requirements first. So we could actually have all the skills required to fly a Megathron in seven days, eight hours. And here's the list. We Basically, the only thing we're missing is Galente Battleship 1. The thing is, to get Battleship 1, we need to have Battlecruiser 3, and Cruiser 3, and Destroyer 3, and Frigate 3, as well as Spaceship Command 4. Right? Well, hey, we're researching Spaceship Command 4, so we got that going for us, and we can do these others as well. Um, on an alpha queue, we'll, you know, we won't be able to queue everything at once, but we can get there. So if you really want to get to a Megathron, there you go, seven days. Now, we don't own some of these skill books, and some of them are very expensive. The skill book for the Galente battleship is 9.7 million ISK, which is a lot of money. On the other hand, that's also exactly how much we've got in our cargo hold right now, which is pretty amazing. And then again, you can look at the mastery of like, okay, technically just being able to fly a Megathron, you know, isn't the same as you should fly a Megathron. So you're going to want to look at some of the other skills that are good fits with the Megathron. And also you're going to want a lot of money because the Megathron itself is estimated at about 140 million ISK to buy just the hull. And you're going to be putting in probably way more than that in the fittings. And there's a chance that someone will just be like, ooh, a Megathron, that's pretty sexy. I wish to destroy it. And then all of a sudden you've lost your money on your Megathron, which is why, again, one of the cardinal rules of EVE only fly what you can afford to repair. Luckily, basically all the frigates, super easy to repair, and they're awesome. Honestly, between the exploration with an Imicus, or whatever your equivalent is, and or mining with the Venture, you can make a surprising amount of money. Exploration can make money faster than mining frigate, uh, but it can also get you killed. And sometimes you're just going to spend like, you know, a bunch of time scanning and not really finding anything useful. The frigate, at least like flying out to an asteroid belt in high security is really safe and easy. You just get the job started. You can watch Netflix. It's not fast. It's not necessarily exciting. Although I find it a very Zen experience. That's kind of fun and enjoyable, not exciting, but enjoyable. There's a difference. Anyway, that's exploration. Again, um, you should absolutely do the exploration career, which I did as well, but I found narrating it was not very interesting. Um, so there we have it. But yeah, I've got a, I've got a inventory full of loot over here. Um, look at that, 9 million. So at, at this point, whenever I finish all the career agents, what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to grab all the stuff in this item hanger, move it to my ship. And I'm going to want to fly all this stuff to a trade hub and sort of make that my home. So again, uh, you can Google the list of all the trade hubs, um, but as a um, as a Galente person, where I'm going to go is, where's the map? There's the map, is Dodixi, which is not going to be very far. Uh, can I not search this window? Oh, there it is. Dodixi. And specifically, it's this one here, I believe. Dodixi 9, Moon 20, Federal Federation Navy Assembly Plant. I think this is what's used primarily as a trade spot in here. So if we set that as a destination, it's six jumps away. One of them's through a somewhat lower security system over here at 0.5, but that's not too scary. And this is a good place to sell things because while you can sell stuff anywhere by right clicking on it, um, oh, it's gotta be, hang on. Why can't I sell it here? Is it because it's in my ship inventory? No. Is it? Oh, yeah, I can't sell from my ship inventory. I could try to sell the item here but this, um, this star base where I'm at isn't necessarily the most the busiest. It's fairly busy, though. You can see there's 61 guests in here. A lot of them will be newbies. It's a good place to sell equipment that new players would like to use, like all the stuff we've bought so far. But it's not going to be a good place necessarily to sell these blueprints. Now, someone who's dedicated to, to buying these will be able to find them just about anywhere. Oh, there's an example. Electronic, no. Electronic superiority, superiority rigging. Um is uh, some equipment that needs a particular skill. So we'd have to even learn a skill to be able to uh, work on this. But anyway, so I would fly this to the Dixie and then try to sell it there. And that's probably where I'm going to be for the next video. Uh, keep in mind, I do have more ships here in my ship hangar, the Imicus, the Velator, and Adventure, um, and I might, or in the Navitas, and I might want to take multiple trips. Well, the Imicus is the one I'm flying. I might want to take multiple trips in just my capsule 
fly back over here, get in one of these ships, and then maybe fly it over to the Dixie, and just, just have everything sort of set up there, for example. It's a good sort of initial base of operation. I will say this, though. If you're into exploration, you might want to make a base of operation that's a little bit further out of the way from the main sites because Dodixie is very popular, very common, and so all the systems right next to here, there's a very good chance other people are exploring these systems. Whereas if you just sort of pick somewhere a little arbitrary, especially if there's like a dead end or anything like that, and it's just a little further out of the way, like this um, Chlor Teller system looks like it's dead end to me. So there's gonna be very little through traffic there, not to mention this system here. Ooh, that's 0.3 security, that's low security. But again, very unlikely that people are gonna make their way over here. Maybe this is a decent system for you to live in and um, just do exploration. And then every now and again, bring all your good stuff over to the Dixie, trying not to die along the way, um, to sell it over there. Anyway, that's it, folks. Thanks for watching. And uh, let me know in the comments what you might like to see next time, because I'm actually not sure what the next step of this tutorial series will be or might be. So there might be a delay. This might be the last one forever, although I don't think so. Um, let me know what, uh, what kind of questions you might have if you've started playing the game. And uh, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye, folks.